Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens, and he's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how you doing today, buddy? Doing great, Matt. And you? I'm all right. We're having a weirdly warm winter day. I've it's been good... in uh, fleeces and sweatshirts for like a month. But that's a good thing. Warm days are always good things. I love it. I love it. All right, man. Episode 109, get more clients with the right message. Get more clients with the right message. So we talked about messaging before. But let's talk about where it fits in our overall thing, right? So we talk about um, you've got to attract clients, you've got to deliver a wow experience for clients, and then you've got to scale and service your business, right? So attract, deliver, and scale we talk about. So this would fall under attracting. How to attract clients, and how do we attract clients? We gotta have the right message, right? Yeah, so the message, I think to start off with, um, to have the right message, you've got to, we're just going to, we're not going to go into target audience, but you've got to know who you're delivering the message to. I mean, yep. it, it's exactly like if right. you, if you want to uh, attract a, a woman, um, you got to be pretty specific on which one, if you're going to come up with a, a line or something. So it, it's the same thing here. So we're going to, we're not going to talk about the target audience today um, all that much, but we're, because we could, that could be an entire show all right. by itself. But right. um, so we're going to assume that you know who you are, your audience is. And right. So, you would need a target audience first. Exactly right. A niche. So a message would be something like, remember Domino's Pizza used to have, you know, 30 minutes hot and fresh. Something yeah. like that. Right? Um, your, yeah. I think it was their original message was uh, your pizza in 30 minutes or it's free. Now they had to go away from that because of multiple lawsuits and other things. <laughs> yeah. Still was a great message. It built what, a company, a giant. It built company. a company. FedEx. They had a, um, you know, a message. Uh, what it absolutely has, positively has to be there overnight. Yeah, I think that was them. Wasn't that uh, uh, their million dollar? So we call this the million dollar message or market dominating position. Your unique selling proposition. These are similar words to your message. Your million dollar message. Your market dominating position, right? And so. There's an exercise that we did. I just learned this recently from another friend of mine, and we did it with, I did it with one of my clients earlier this week. And so the exercise would be, all right, so, so tell me, um, actually, I wrote it out. It's really funny. It's only three questions. All right. I want you to, and we'll just go out, list out all the things your clients expect from you, right? Let's, we're, we're in a market dominating position. And we could use an example like uh, anything, physical therapist, chiropractor, landscape. We've used all these before. And so list it out, try to get 50 of them. So it was really quite comical when I did this and they're going through, Oh, you know, so let's say physical therapy. Oh, we could get you back in shape. Oh, I've been doing this for 25 years. Oh, we've got, you know, a really nice facility and the best equipment. This was a physical therapist. So best equipment, um, all those things. And it's really hard to get 50, but you're, you're cheering them on. You're making them work. What are the 50 things that, that how you differentiate, differentiate yourself from your client? What's your million dollar message, right? Boom, boom, boom. All right, that's step number one. Step number two would be, all right, absolutely throw all those away. And, and he was like, what? What do you mean throw away? The point of that is, is most of those 50 were what we call platitudes, right? I've been in business a long time. Well, I've, I'm highly qualified. Well, I would expect that, right? Um, I've got great equipment. Well, I would expect that from a physical therapist. I, I think you know what you're doing. I think, you, you know, that doesn't tell me how you're different or how you're solving my problem. Yeah. That's really all about you. We call those platitudes, right? Anybody can say, any physical therapist can say that. Any plumber can say, we family owned, been in business for 25 years, right? Yada, yada, yada. Nobody cares about, you know, nobody cares about your company. They only care about how whatever your product or service is, if it can make somebody's life better, improve their life, solve a problem, which is when you solve a problem, you make somebody's life better. Yeah. Then, then they can fit into the story. If you are telling their story, it yes. has to be about them. If you're, if you're, if you're telling my company's been in business, I, I hear it all the time. Right. We've been in business 25 years. We've got 15 qualified technicians. We have, we have, and they go down the list of all the things we have and none of that matters. I got, right. I got crap in the tub. That's, can you get the crap out of my tub? If you're, if you're, you know, if you're, you're looking for a plumber, that's the only thing that matters. Can you get the crap out of my tub? What, right. And so you got to get to that mentality of your client, yeah. that emotion. 
and, and that was level, you know, question number three, other than that, all those platitudes, how do you, you know, how do you solve your client's problem? How do you differentiate yourself? So at one time, so I have a builder friend down uh, and I have a builder friend and I have actually several builder friends. And then I used to be a builder and built several spec houses and did some flips myself. And part of my pitch was I built this house so me and my family could live in it, right? There's my million dollar message was I built it so a whatever, Atlanta person with two daughters, this is how I would, this is how I would want my house to live in. I, I built this so in case I decided to move in here, right? What did I want? I want a home office. I want a basement. I want a backyard for the kids. I want a garage to put my cars in. I want a little office over here for my wife. I want a little mud room for the kids. I mean, this is exactly how, what I want in my house. So my million dollar message was built for families of, of four, right? And not that that's great, but that's a great, if you're a builder, don't just say we do quality work. We've been building houses for 25 years, right? That's what they usually say, right? Mm -hmm. But if the million dollar message is, well, we build houses for families of four. We build house. I build houses just like I would want to live in. Yeah, like, I, like I was, I was talking to another builder, and he said, his thing was, well, we have our all of our own crews, and and I said, okay, why does that matter to your customer? Right. What What does that have to do with anything? Because if they're talking to another builder who's less money can the subcontractors do the job as good as somebody who has their own crew? Well, if the answer is yes, it's, it's a no consequence. Yeah. So um, tell me what, why that's important. Tell me yeah, why tell it's me important why. more than, you know, um, why it matters that you have your own crews. Tell, tell, tell me why that matters to me and my family. Cause I want, I want to build a house or I want to, you know, most people don't want to build a house. What they want is a roof over their head. <laughs> right, right you know, they want, they want a nice place to live. They don't want to build a house. Nobody wants to build a house. And if you've built houses, you understand why nobody wants to build a house. No, and you're exactly right. Cause, cause you know, explain to me why that's important. I was working with uh, an auto, a car wash guy, a car wash guy. And it's, you know, gave me all the platitudes. We've been in business forever. We do a great job and da, da, da. And I was like, well, what's the difference between that and me just washing it outside with some soap and water and putting some armor all over? And he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't do that because the armor all really just washes stuff around or whatever. That, that's what you need to tell me. Tell me why your wash is, the wash is just the beginning. Yeah, give what me else ten, are you doing? Yeah, give me yeah. 10 reasons why yes. armor all is not as good as what you use or, yeah, or, your, or your, your method. You have, this, you have this unique method uh, right. that, that assures yes. me the cleanest, best smelling vehicle. Now see the cleanest, best smelling vehicle that appeals to me. That has right. nothing to do with you. I want a vehicle that smells good. I want a vehicle right. that's clean. I want, you know, those are my aspirations. Yep. yep. I don't care if you've been cleaning vehicles for a hundred years. Um, it, it, not, none of that matters. No. And think about like the oil change guys. Now they have these checklists. We're going to check which they were doing anyway, but now they're, you know, we're checking the fluids and the air pressure and the windshield wipers and the uh, whatever, air filter, right? Check, check, check. Now all those can help them make more money. That's a great upsell, right, for them. But it's also a checklist of this is how we, you know, we're not just changing your oil. We are making sure your car is safe, the, the, the tire's depth, right, or the tread depth. That's on their checklist. And they're, they're giving the impression of, this is how we're different. We're not just changing your oil. We're making sure your vehicle is in tip top shape to keep you safe and secure or to perform its best. I guess it depends on who you're talking to, but it's a little checklist, right? I work with a, uh, another financial advisor that I'm coaching. We're doing a financial planning checklist, right? So that checklist is here are the things we're covering. And it's part of a way of, they're doing all these things anyway. There's the, the clients aren't always aware of what's going on behind the scenes. Just like you said, the builder who's got his own, uh, uh, crew, why that's important. Tell me why your own crew should matter to me. Yeah. And they're, and they're, they're valid reasons. I'm sure. Yeah. But t yeah, list them and make sure yeah. your client and, and when you list them, don't list them because well, subcontractors are hard on the builder and cause none of that matters. Right. Why is it better for me as yeah, a, why is it better? You because? because we right. can, you can, you know, whatever, if you're a kitchen Quality remodeler. control, yeah, quality control or fix any errors or 
that our people won't steal from you or, you know, I, I yeah. don't know. I mean, those are, I'm, I'm no, just, we talked about this. I, I, I did, I did a mover before we've done a moving company before and we did the checklist on that. It turns out moving there was some, I can't remember the stats right now, but I'm, when you move in a moving truck to from your apartment or whatever, your house, things get broken. And, you know, so there's a distinction. We have a unique process where things don't get broken. Right. So that was a process. And then, Oh, they buy insurance, but the insurance is by the pound. So if your TV breaks, you know, it's a thousand dollar TV, but it only weighed 10 pounds. You only get, you know, whatever, 10 bucks for it. Right. But not us. We do replacement value insurance. So they had all these unique processes and unique, they were doing things right. They just weren't explaining it to the customer of why it matters. So then it turned into, you're the lead magnet guy. Your marketing message can be the lead magnet, how to evaluate a mover, how to evaluate a builder, how to evaluate Joe Polish, the carpet cleaner right? Yeah. Because that checklist, how to evaluate an oil change guy, right? Do they do all these things? Oh, we do all these things. And why? Yeah. Because it's better for you, the consumer. And the, and the thing with the right message, I mean, if you're going to attract people with the right message, it always, I believe you've got to get to the emotional level of how they're going to feel when their problem is solved. You know, um, Every kiss begins with K, okay, <laughs> is a slogan, but the idea is the kiss. And there's a lot of emotion in a kiss. Well, they're trying to create an emotion that says, if you want that kiss, you got to buy this thing. And so they've created emotion and they've, what problem are they solving? Every kiss begins with K has nothing to do. They're not saying we've been a jeweler for 25 years. Right. We've got diamonds. We've got uh, gold. We've got, they, they're not telling you any of that. It's just, they're getting to an emotional part of, they understand that the, the jewelry is a gift. So they're really moving along and it's good to listen to messages. I, I listen. So uh, what's funny is, we, we, uh, as we just moved into a new house and we've been listening to regular radio a lot, uh, okay. because there, there was a boom box left behind and I've just, I set it on the counter and it's been there ever since. The problem with regular radio is it has commercials. And so I'm hearing all these commercials and some of them, I'm like, this is really bad. <laughs> I, but then I realized, here's the thing. When you, when you advertise on the radio or on TV and you, and you use the, people that are at the radio station to make your ad for you, you got to understand most of the time, these are $35,000 a year radio employees. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. They're not marketing geniuses. They are not marketing geniuses <laughs> or they would be making a lot more. Not they're, they're not Dan Kennedy, right? They're not Dan Kennedy, right? Direct response marketing. So, uh, that's where you end up with ads that are all about the person running the ad. And then right. you, gotta, you gotta avoid, avoid it like the, plague because you want to you want to create content that attracts people to a message of transformation really i mean whatever it is i mean if if you're gonna like you are going to a chiropractor because you've got a problem you know with your golf swing now it's really a problem with your with your muscles but a good chiropractor is smart enough to say i'll help get your golf swing back to 100 percent now right. that's a great message that's a great message, right? And, and that's a niche, right? So as a chiropractor, you would have a message for your golfers, right? Fix your back in six weeks, you know, our, our back buster program. And maybe that's the chiropractor and a massage and some exercises, right? That would be a great niche. And then you could have as a chiropractor, you know, uh, whatever, fix your tennis elbow package, right? And that's going to be somehow a chiropractor and some physical therapy, boom. And, but it's one niche at a time and one message per market. Right. Yeah. We were talking, I think we mentioned this before a divorce <laughs> attorney uh, here in town only does $5 million divorces and above. Right. His message is it eludes quality or gosh, he must be good because he only deals with people with $5 million or more. Right. So his message is built in self screening. I only take people with 5 million or more self screening, but it's also, gosh, he must do really quality work. If he's, he's not worried about everyday person, he only wants the, so there's a quality in his message. Yeah. It, it eludes that, right? Yeah. Um, and, and of course, I mean, there's part of me that says, okay, he only does five. So that's his target audience. 
but what's his message? And, and so, because attorneys will advertise sometimes by just sheer numbers. You'll hear their yeah. name, but their ads are not always that great. Um, we're not afraid to fight big insurance companies. Okay, that's all fine and good. How, how, how is that making my life better? The good ones will tell you, we'll, we'll recover. We've recovered over a billion dollars for yes, our clients. I was going to say, that's their new message. They just really started that in the last year or so, where they're actually starting to put dollar amounts. We've recovered, you know, $900 million for our clients, right? They're, and that is much better than call us with a strong arm of the law, right? Yeah. It, it's because it's starting to quantify it. We recover more than you can expect or the most you can expect. That's for me. I don't care you've been in it for 25 years. I do care you've recovered $900 million or you will help me maximize the value of my case, right? Those yeah. are things that are good messages towards me, right? Sure. If, and, and so these are always... Um, these are the things that we look at when we, when we talk to, you know, somebody and we're helping them design this message. It's funny, you talked about the platitudes, but the platitudes are mostly what you see. And moving away from that, I got a real estate flyer um, today with, you know, the top million dollar producers <laughs> and all of these things. And I'm like, right. but, but what, if I'm, if I'm moving to, to Jacksonville, Florida, what, what I'm looking for is a house for me and my family in a great neighborhood. Um, you know, just solve my problem. Help me find, you know, we help, right. we help find unique houses for people who have unique needs, whatever, whatever the, that message is. Well, oh, yeah. well, you know, we'll sell your home in 30 days or it's free, right? There's an aggressive message. If you're a real estate agent looking for listings, right? Um, we've talked about this before, uh, a kitchen remodeler. Don't call me if you want a kitchen like anybody else's. I only do unique stuff. Don't call me if you want the average job done. I only do above average, right? These are some good messages where they're built in quality in there, right? That, that um, uh, the, the car wash guy, we're going back to that. We were, we were talking about, don't call me if your car wash guy does this, this, and this. His checklist was in the marketing message itself, right? Gosh, I don't know if my car wash guy does that. Uh, I'll ask, and if he doesn't, I'll probably come see you, right? <laughs> right. So part of the messaging can be its own qualifier, like the $5 million divorce. Like, hey, don't call me for a normal kitchen. I only do exceptional kitchens. Don't call me for a normal bathroom. I only do exceptional bathrooms, right? So your message can be, gosh, he's, there used to be a guy here in town called the overeducated painter. <laughs> right. And so his story was he was a college educated guy, does really, really high quality stuff, but he's a one man show and he's, and he's really slow, but he's always busy because his marketing. What does that mean? The overeducated painter. Well, he went to college. It was true. And then he ends up doing really quality work. True. He's a one man crew. So he, the, the pro the cons. But I was like, man, you could have the overeducated plumber. You could have the overeducated HVAC guy. You can have a whole overeducated because it kind of portrays hey he's probably qualified and then of course you do the anyway it was just a neat little over overeducated painter i've always loved that story and I, that's an interesting story i'd never heard of the overeducated painter yeah. but um I, i'm trying to think of this guy paul i'm trying to think of what he calls himself new age hippie that's what he calls yeah. himself so he does solar but you know he's he's a solar installer calls himself a new age hippie but he drives, you know, F-250 truck. So he does all the opposite things. That's why he calls himself a new age hippie because he believes that people should conserve. But what I was going to get at about Paul was that that message, if your message is too, like requires people to think too hard, it might not be the right message. Right. Uh, right. You, don't want, you don't want people to have to think. And it's not because people aren't smart it's because they're being bombarded with a lot of other ads. You probably want about a fifth grade education on your advertising because you want people to pick it up quick. Not because they're dumb, strictly because they're being bombarded with advertising messages. They're just busy, right? So, so this fits right in. The, 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 the million dollar message, your market dominating position fits right into, we've talked about it before, the marketing equation, right? Yeah. That you've got to interrupt. You've got to interrupt them. And your one liner should... Should your headline, you and I were talking about headlines before we got on the call, uh, your headline should be, oh, yeah, I want that. Or, yeah, I want to learn more about that. Um, 
that, that your million dollar message should be pretty clean, pretty self-explanatory or pretty engaging. Uh, we call it the interrupt, engage, educate and offer. That's, that's the marketing equation. So you, your million dollar message, what's that? It's there to interrupt and then we're gonna engage, educate and make the offer. That's, so this feeds right into our marketing equation. But you gotta start with your target market, your niche. Then you gotta work on your million dollar message, your market dominating position. How are you different than 25 years in the business, family owned, quality work, right? So one, one of the things I do as a copywriter, now having taken, you know, uh, I'm having taken Ray Edwards, uh, not just his copywriting, his copywriting certification. I'm one of his certified uh, master copywriting coaches, but he uses something called the pastor formula, which is right. pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R. It's not religious. It just, it starts with the problem. You, you talk about somebody's problem, and um, you talk about them, the person, person, problem, pain. That's what he calls the P of pastor, person, problem, pain. So you talk to them about their problem, their pain, and um, then you move on to their aspirations and you amplify that pain and you kind of agitate it, you know, that like you've got a bad shoulder, you kind of agitate it. Like I, I hear this, uh, this, uh, this doctor has been, do you have clicking in your joints, clicking or pain in your joints? Okay, yeah. So he's talking about a specific pain point. And then he talks about how it affects your golf and it affects your ability to lift weights. And he's going into agitating. So he's actually problem, you know, um, amplifying that pain. Then you go into a story and the story is typically about the solution. Now, remember, if you've got a 30 second window to do this or 15 seconds, you got to do this quickly. You get the story solution and then T is the transformation or testimony. You want to tell people how you're going to make their life better. And the best way to, to make people trust you is with tell about somebody else who, who had it done for them and it worked for them. And then, then you move. Okay, so you've got to the T. Now you go to the O, oh, offer. You got to make an offer. And that's the offer is the problem you're going to solve. Here's how, how I can help you. Call us. Okay, that's, that's asking for the action or the response. So that's the pastor formula. I've just given away tens of thousands of dollars of, of education quickly, but that's the formula you can use anytime you want to create the right message. It's right. not hard. I mean, right. it's all based in trust. If somebody likes you, they'll listen to you. If they'll listen to you, they'll believe you. If they believe you, they'll trust you. And if they trust you, they might buy from you. But if they don't trust you, they'll never buy. And right. so it's got to be about them. And that's how you build trust is is by talking about the things that they love, enjoy, and the things that matter to them. And then that, that builds trust, right? If you're talking to, uh, talking with your spouse and all you do is talk about yourself, she's not gonna listen. <laughs> it's a sh short lived relationship, that's right. <laughs> no, but you're exactly right. So some of the, you know, the million dollar messages are stuff like the pain-free dentist, right? That's self-explanatory, pain-free dentist. One of the biggest fears of people going to dentists is pain is pain. So pain free dentist is kind of self explanatory. We talked about like for the golfer's back, you know, back pain healed in six weeks or six week back pain go away. I don't, I don't know how you say that, right? Uh, the cure. Well, you can't say the cure because that's one of those things in medicine. You can't, can't use the, the word cure. right, right. Um, but you can pain free. You could say pain, the pain free back, right? Pain Ten free in six cured. weeks or your money back. That that's yeah. a really really solid. Uh, by the way. If you're if you're in the chiropractic or and you do back pain free in six weeks or your money back, that's a pretty good headline. That's a, that's a fantastic right. That's a fantastic message, and you've you've tuned it in right. That's even broad enough to be the the golfers, the tennis players, the runners, the people sitting at their desk right. That could be broad enough message of, you know, uh, for for anybody with back pain because apparently everybody has back pain. But when you when you talk about the pain free dentist, okay, so pain free dentistry, that's awesome. So for a while, you heard advertisements that were sedation dentistry. Right. Well, that sounds kind of, I don't want to be sedated, but if you're going to give me pain-free dentistry, I, I want that. You see right. the difference? They're the same thing, but one says, I want that. The other says, I'm not sure I want to be sedated. <laughs> That's a good point. And you can do messages like the, you know, the perfect smile, right? Because that might be you're more of a cosmetic dentist or you're really working on the cosmetics of it, right? So, so the other, we, I work with dentists all the time. So there's all kinds of marketing messages and million dollar messages. But um, there's a big dentist down in, uh, I think it's Orlando and it's um, the perfect smile. There you go. In, 
I think he says in one visit. So it's it, like they, they do implants and they take out all the old teeth and they put in the whole, all new ones in. Of course, they, gotta, they, they, they have a process that takes a six month process. They come back and then they reset the implants. But I think it's the perfect smile in one visit or something, something like that. It's, that's a pretty good message, right? That's a really good message. Yeah, I mean, right? that's, and, but, it's, but the, the point is his message is very clear. It's like a $90,000 procedure. But, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, if you want all your teeth replaced, but this guy, I mean, he's got people backed up. Why? Well, I, I'm guessing because he can constantly advertise because he picks up 90 grand every time he does a mouth. <laughs> but I'm guessing argument. you're probably paying $40,000 of that for advertising. <laughs> That's pretty good. So we talked today about attracting, uh, getting more clients with the right message, right? So the right message, pain-free dentist. We talked about uh, Domino's Pizza, 30 minutes or it's free. We talked about FedEx uh, absolutely positively has to be there overnight. These are great messages, right, that speak to your prospects. And yes, I want that, or yes, I want to know more. They're the ones that come beating down your door as opposed to you're chasing them away, or chasing them down, right? So where does this fit in? The, the message, you got to have a great message, yeah. But as we talked about before, this is all under the attraction. How do we attract clients? How do we get more leads, right? We talked about we got to have a target market. We got to have a niche. We got to have the message has to be right. We talked about educating and compelling offers. We talked about irresistible offers. We talked about converting them once we get in front of them. I got a lead. How do I close the deal? How do I take them to the next step? Obviously, advertising. We talked about unique processes, right? That's all under the attraction of clients, right? You got to attract clients in order to, to have a business, right? So that's the kind of stuff we talked about in our mastermind group. We were just talking about the marketing message today, the million dollar message, the market dominating position, and how to use that to attract more clients, to get more clients, have the right message. Quit talking about yourself, quit talking about how long you've been in business and you do quality work and then it's family owned. No one cares. No they, one cares. They, what is that? They, they only care if they know how much you care. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. There you go. And the way to make them know how much you care is to talk about them and how you solve their problem. It's never about you. You, It really is not. The only time it becomes about you is when you go home and you've got the money and you want to spend it. Then it can become <laughs> about you. But if you're single, that works. But if you go home and all you do is talk about you, you're kind of boring to hang out with. It's always about the other person. Everybody thinks about themselves. In marketing, you got to amplify your marketing to think about the person you're talking to, how you're going to transform their life. So they can't live without you. You got to make them think they can't live without you so that, that you know, without the, the thing you solve. You're the obvious choice, right? They'd be, they'd be idiots not to do business with you. So to wrap it up, so this is what we talk about in our uh, mastermind type group. You got to attract clients. A million dollar message, a market dominating position is one of the ways that we talk about attracting clients. You got to deliver the wow experience and you've got to scale the business and service the business and make it grow, right? Those are the things we talk about in our mastermind group. This is just one of those categories. We've talked about it in the past. You only need three things in this world to be successful. You got to have commitment, committed to do whatever it takes. You got to have a roadmap. I need a way to get there, someone to follow, and I need support. I need a support system. We've got two out of the three. We just need your commitment, right? We got the roadmap. We've got the support system. That's what a mastermind group is. That's what our coaching structure is. So if you're interested in our mastermind group, send an email out to matt at profitabilitymd.com, dave at profitabilitymd.com. Have a little conversation, seeing if we're a good fit, right? We're starting a new group next month, I think the beginning of next month. So see if you want to start off with that with us. Uh, you can find ProfitabilityMD.com. That's where all these podcasts are. Obviously, we're on any uh, podcast, uh, uh, any podcast, wherever you get your podcast. We got our YouTube channel, ProfitabilityMD. We also make pretty videos so you can see our uh, pretty faces during this. Um, but this is good stuff. This is what we love to do. We are here to help people create uh, the business of their dream, create their own million-dollar business, their own million-dollar practice, their own million dollar and does that make a million dollars or a million in revenue we talk about making money that's what we care about yeah make more take more time off pay less in taxes those are the things we care about so this is great marketing message 
how to get more clients with the right message. How does it fit in the overall roadmap? Three things to be successful. You got to commit, you need a roadmap, and you need support. We got two out of the three. Just bring your commitment, baby. We're here for you. That's it. <laughs> great show, man. All right. All right. Have a great, great afternoon. Take care. Bye.